from adjacentness number five. Adjacentness number five. Never be sad or despondent. Either has faith to believe. Grace for the duties before thee. Ask of thy God and receive. What if thy body suppress thee? What though thy life may be drear? Look on the side that is brightest. Pray, and thy path will be clear. Never be sad or despondent. There is a morrow for thee. Soon thou shalt dwell in his brightness. There where the Lord thou shalt be. Never be sad or despondent. Lean on the arm of thy Lord. Dwell in the depths of his mercy. Thou shalt receive thy reward. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up. Never give up to thy sorrows. Jesus will bid them depart. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Sing. When your trials are greatest, trust in the Lord and take heart.
Before the Sunday message today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Gospel according to St. John. The Gospel according to St. John. John 6. John 6. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes, and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread, that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred pennyworth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand, and Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together, and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea, and entered into a ship, and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea, and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, It is I. Be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein two his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone, howbeit there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, after that the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping, and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
But I said unto you that ye also have seen me, and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, And they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard, and hath learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof, and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live for ever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time many of his disciples went back, and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
everyone this year and it's looking for number one you'll be in jesus name father we thank you for this new day thank you for this service thank you for this new year thank you for what you've started doing already in every life lord we pray that this year will really be new for everyone in jesus name the sicknesses of last year gone oppression of last year gone harassment of last year gone and the failure the defeat of last year gone in jesus name make this a new year for everyone a year of serving the lord a year of great reward from heaven and a year of impartation of the power of your spirit and the gifts in jesus name bless your people today bless them this week bless them this month and bless them throughout the year in jesus name and somebody shout the lord bless you richly we're looking at romans chapter 12 romans chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service as we enter the new year he wants to remind us that because the mercies of the lord are new every day and he showers his blessing upon us every day and he wants to do that throughout the year by the mercies of the lord you then you are going to respond and you're going to reciprocate that now you are presenting your bodies are living sacrifice to god you are presenting everything you got everything your body your hands your mouth your eyes your feet can do for the glory of god you're presenting that afresh anew holy unto the lord you're presenting something to the lord acceptable just like if, if somebody give you a gift and you, you'll be looking forward to that gift and you say i'm going to get a gift i'm going to get a gift and eventually it brings the thing and the thing looks like peanut it's like nothing i say is this what i was waiting for is this all i'm going to get for you it's unacceptable the same thing as you come to the lord this year and you offer your body your gifts your talent your service unto the lord god is not going to look at it and say ah, is this all is this what you are going to offer it's like peanuts this doesn't take any effort at all this is all you are going to give me it will not be so this year it will be something acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world i'm sure you understand when it says be not conformed to this world it's talking about a reasonable service and it says do not be conformed to this world you sometimes you go to a restaurant and you want to eat and the people who are cooking back there and the people who are serving out here and the management who are on the top floor right there they're having problems together between themselves but you don't know about their problems you are not part of their problem you came to eat at the restaurant and then you sit down you make your order and as the food comes in even the attitude in which it is served you say what's the matter here even the way they put everything there as if they're not expecting anybody to come and eat in their restaurant well they know how to serve but because of the problem they are having with their management because of the problem we are having with the cooks and then they bring in the food but God has not offended you I say God has not offended you did you see that is a covenant keeping God say my God is a covenant keeping God and so when you come to serve 
in the church when you come to serve the almighty god with cheerfulness with happiness and you're offering your very best and you're not doing like they're doing in the restaurants of the world be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind our minds are renewed this year our lives are renewed this year our attitude in offering to the lord is renewed this year in jesus name that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god you will serve the lord i will serve the lord and you younger people you are going to run faster than your pastor this year in jesus name running the same race and running the same direction but while i'm picking my time and i'm you know patiently going on you, you know sometimes uh, i look at some people they say the pastor is slow this time i'll be slow don't you look up here and see how old the pastor is and so if he's slow and he's taking his time and he's watching his steps and you now that were passing the service too and then you say the pastor is slow i'm going to be slow the pastor is taking time i'm going to take time ah, ah. rise up and run somebody there i said rise up and run and be an encouragement to the people coming behind you that with your strength and your skill and your usefulness you're going to run in jesus name now i told you i was slowing down but now i'm getting new strength i'm getting new power and i'm going to be renewed you'll be surprised i'm going to run faster than I ever did in jesus name and if I am going to run faster, I pass it on to you. I said, I pass it on to you. You will work for the Lord. And look at this. Look at verse 3. It says, For I say, I say, through the grace given unto me to every man that's among you. Look at that. The message of God comes to everyone. We cannot say, I'm a newcomer. I say to every man among you, everyone in the congregation, everyone in the assembly, the Lord is speaking to us and he says, I say, by the grace of God given to me, unto every man among you, look at this, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. What's that telling us? And let's come back to our Bible understanding. It's saying, let not Aaron think of himself more highly than he ought to think and think like I am Moses. No, you are not. Aaron, God said, he, Moses, will be like a God unto you and you will be a small piece let not aaron think himself think of himself as moses is telling us as we go back to the bible let not korah dathan and abiram think of themselves as if they were, they were aaron and then there is this competition he did this i must do that no he's saying let not philip think of himself as if he is peter or john philip went to samaria and then he did great exploits for the glory of god and now peter and john came and you can see that there's a difference between philip and peter philip and john with all the things that had happened in samaria there were things that had not happened and so philip think about it today do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think as if you were peter or john apollos i know you're eloquent apollos i know you're fervent and forceful let not apollos think of himself as aquila and priscilla did those ones in the congregation although they keep quiet and they're looking on let not apollo think of himself more highly than he ought to think as if i cannot learn anything from aquila and priscilla i'm eloquent 
I'm forceful, I'm powerful, and this is what I can do. Silas, can I speak to you? Let not Silas think of himself as Paul. Yes, both of you can sing together. Paul and Silas sing, sang. And then the foundations of the prison, the foundation was shaking. But all the same, Silas, let not anyone think of himself more highly than he ought to think. You see, your wristwatch, or maybe your phone, the watch or your phone, is as useful when it stays in its place look up here i have a watch here and it's good while it's at its place near me if this watch could see the big bang that we have at the center of the town and this watch here will say i want to be there i want to be there and is thinking of itself more highly than the ought to think and i said okay go ahead and we'll lift it up and lift it up and lift it up side by side with the big bang we can't see it again it's out of sight it becomes useless because it's thinking of itself more highly come down when you come down and you take your place and you're not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to think and you are humble and you think of your value and you keep to that value this year you're going to be useful yeah. selling us there should be no false superiority no false attitude no vain glory no pride and on the other hand let not paul think of himself lower than he ought to think and be like silas on the other hand let not moses think of himself lower than he ought to think and thinking like aaron he has a peculiar position that moses and he has a peculiar a kind of transforming power miracle working power in the land of israel let not moses have that false inferiority humility inferiority complex i cannot yes you can i said yes i can i said yes i can i can do all things all things are ordained for me to do all things as a portion for me to do i can do all things through christ who strengthens me it will strengthen you this year in jesus name but you know how he wants us to do it is giving us ministry and he itemizes the ministries in chapter 12 and he tells us look at verse 8 verse 8 or he that exhorteth on exhortation he that giveth let him do it number one number one number one was simplicity be simple hearted be simple hearted don't be complicated don't be difficult live a simple life a straightforward life the work he has given you to do concentrate on it and just simply it's not complicated with simplicity that's number one look at verse eight there he that truly is tell me what well, diligence number two be diligent at it is called you to serve this year and as we're serving him he says he's going to reward you and you do it number one with simplicity you do it number two with diligence look at that verse eight number three and he that shows mercy with cheerfulness cheerfulness you remember the restaurant i was talking about you know you sit on the table and you put uh, the food there's no smile on their faces and they are frowning they've never met you before and they're ministering they want to serve you you even lose your appetite as you see the way they serve but it says when you're coming to serve the people of god will have some newcomers there they have heard about the covenant service of deeper life and they're coming with expectation and now you come to serve them don't frown 
Don't do or see if there's something wrong. Don't do or see if you are carrying such a heavy load. And then there's somebody is forcing you to come and do this. You do it with cheerfulness. And the Lord will bless your ministry in Jesus' name. As he told us how to serve with simplicity. How to serve with diligence. How to serve with cheerfulness. Then he tells us what not to do. Look at verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. As we serve the people, serve in love. Whatever the service may be, however small the service may be, however little space of time that service may occupy, you do it without dissimulation, without pretense, without hatred, without anything wrong at all. Look at verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another without competition without competition as if you know we go back to the restaurant and you're sitting there on the table the one that comes to serve the first cause he comes and serves or cheerfulness and the one that is bringing water or bringing orange juice or whatever a different person is not competing with the other one he serves with the same heart and even when they meet each other on the road they smile at each other and they greet each other as we serve this new year we're going to serve with cheerfulness somebody shout amen and we're going to serve with simplicity and we're going to serve also with uh, diligence in jesus name without dissimulation without competition look at verse 16 be of the same mind one toward another mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate but not wise in your own conceit without self-conceit without ego without pumping yourself up like a balloon it's normal that you pump and pump get bigger and bigger watch it watch it that thing will blow up and you keep on pumping and pumping the balloon is destroyed because it thinks it can take more air than it should take and now it's gone as you pump up yourself no you will not i said you will not as they pump up themselves eventually they are blown up not with self-conceit without self-conceit look at verse 19 daily beloved avenge not yourselves but rather give place unto all for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord without retaliation without retaliation we want to serve the lord and this year as we serve the lord will serve the lord acceptably in jesus name did i lose my amen there yeah. reading from luke chapter one luke chapter one i'm reading from verse 17 a god is a covenant keeping god and all the promises he has made unto us as we serve the lord this year he will fulfill his promises in our lives in jesus name luke chapter 1 i'm reading from verse 70 in verse 70 as i speak by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began that we shall be saved from our enemies this is the year i said this is your year all those things that retarded your progress beat your back drove you back there's a lion in the way that lion is gone enemies are waiting in the way and i cannot go on 
this year you will go on you must climb up you must succeed and all those enemies of the way the lord will clear them in jesus name to perform the promised uh, the mercy promised to our fathers to remember his holy covenant the oath which is swear to our father abraham that he will grant unto us unto me unto me that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies begin to rejoice begin to prepare for a greater year and for a higher year and to, for a prosperous year and for a spiritual life this year in jesus name anything and everything that should have held you back and you say i cannot climb all those things are taken up this year in jesus name that he will grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him how how i said how without fear you know if you are going to the exam hall and you're having fear that fear will knock off your brain you'll forget everything you wanted to write down but you'll go to your exam hall this year without fear if you're starting a project and you have all the wherewithal everything you ought to have to finish that project if fear comes in you'll be trembling your knees will be shaking together the hypertension you didn't have before will knock at the door and the door is open hypertension will enter in once fear enters sickness and all those things will enter this year the door of your life is closed against fear you will walk without fear you go for your interview without fear you speak without fear you evangelize without fear that we might serve him without fear look at verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life last year the previous years if holiness was a tough doctrine holiness was difficult this year holiness made easy it will be like you are drinking water holiness it will be like you are eating what's your best food okay jollof rice it will be like you are eating your love fries holiness will be easy this year in jesus name for me i said for me i see the excitement in your life this year is going to be better i'm talking to you today on our new life and renewed service before the covenant keeping god our new life and renewed service before the covenant keeping god three things we're looking at number one the promise number two the privilege number three the passion the passion this year you'll not be sluggish you'll not be lukewarm you'll not be dull you're not just the dragging your feet there's going to be passion coming out of your life in jesus name number one the promise of deliverance from all our foes all our enemies the promise of deliverance from all our foes number two our privilege of sacrificial service without fear our privilege of sacrificial service without fear number three our passion for holiness before the heavenly father our passion for holiness 
before the heavenly father number one the promise of deliverance from all our foes from all our enemies come back to luke chapter 1 verse 74 luke chapter 1 verse 74 that he will grant unto us the grant is given this year that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies delivered out of the hand of our enemies he made that promise many years ago and now you have come into the kingdom and that promise is to be fulfilled for you in his fullness every iota of fear every grain of fear every atom of fear every little fear every big fear he will deliver you from that in jesus name all those enemies will know they don't have any power over your life they tie the rope around your waist you want to move on they drag your back that rope is shattered exodus chapter 23 exodus chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 22 but if thou shalt indeed obey my voice lord i will obey lord i will obey if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and will do all that i speak then i will be an enemy unto thine enemies that's your amen. amen i will be the almighty god said it will be an enemy to all your enemies and an adversary to thine adversaries look at verse 23 my angel shall go before thee as you are traveling from one place to the other the angel of the lord will go before you as some people are waiting on the road they were not waiting for you they're waiting for other people but uh, sometimes the people that run into uh, those people who are not uh, that you are not they are not waiting for you but this time uh, this year from today somebody help me shout today from today the angel of the lord will go before you i will clear the road before you and look at that verse 23 it says and bring you unto the amorites promised land to the hittites promised land to the Perizzites, promised land to the canaanites promised land to the hittites promised land to the jebusites and i will cut them off isn't this year good isn't this year going to be great it says i will cut them off cut them off cut them off thou shalt not bow down to their gods nor serve them nor do after their works but that shall surely overthrow them you will overthrow all the images and the idols of the occultic worshippers in jesus name and quite break down their images this year verse 25 you shall serve the lord your god you shall serve the lord your god uh, you, you know sometimes we don't understand how god works but this year you will not miss your blessing I was, you know, one of the few days I was, um, you know, walking along uh, the road. You know, people don't see me nowadays walking along like that. But, you know, that time, not too long ago, I was walking along the road and I met somebody. And as he was coming, he was uh, smiling. And I was wondering, who is this person? And then when we met, he said hey, good afternoon so i said good afternoon how are you and who are you he said you may not know me i was at the bible study on monday 
I had a burden. I had an oppression. I had this terrible sickness. And that day you didn't even pray for us at the end of the Bible study. As you were teaching the Bible study like this, all my problems vanished away. You will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread. Amen. And bless your water. Amen. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. The fibroid in your wife is gone. The tumor in your body is gone. And the sickness that is going to take millions of naira from you. You will enjoy the spending of your money. That sickness go in Jesus name. Serve the Lord, serve the Lord. And he says, as you serve the Lord, like that person that told me that it was just at the Bible study, as the word was coming forth, come to the Bible study this year. I said, come this year. Habit may hold you back. And your mind may hold you back. And because you've not been coming, you are not used to it, start something new this year. What you have not been doing before and the lord will start something new also in your life in jesus name verse 26 there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land the number of thy days I will fulfill the number of your days he will fulfill in jesus name the promise of deliverance from all our foes look at psalm 34 psalm 34 i'm reading from verse 7 psalm 34 we're reading in from verse 7 in verse 7 the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them and delivereth them no matter how many the enemies are how many they are the angel of the Lord encampeth round them that fear the Lord and delivereth them O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want, there is no lack, there is no scarcity, and there is no poverty, and there is no famine to them that fear him. You will have plenty this year. Abundance this year surplus this year the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but they that seek the lord shall not want shall not lack any good thing students what are you looking for even if other people don't get this year you'll get it in jesus name if you have already taken the exam and you have already done everything you ought to do you go back home and relax they will call your name they will call your number do you believe it is done in jesus name come ye children hacking unto me I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? You will see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking girl. Depart from evil. Do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Any righteous person here today? The eyes of the Lord are upon you. His ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that will do evil. Anybody that will try to do evil against you, the face of the Lord will be against them. 
to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth the righteous cry and the lord hears and delivers and delivers and delivers them out of out of out of troubles gone oppression gone dangers gone disaster gone destruction gone those bad dreams they are nullified the lord is nice unto them that of a broken heart and save such as be of a contrite spirit verse 19 many are the afflictions of the righteous but tell me now but say it aloud but the lord delivers him out of some of them out of them all i welcome you to this year of blessing psalm 81 psalm 81 i'm reading from verse 13 psalm 81 we're reading from verse 13 oh that my people had hearkened unto me oh that my people had listened to me oh that my people had obeyed my word and israel had walked in my ways i shall soon have subdued their enemies i should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries obedience to the lord brings us victory brings us dominion over all enemies and adversaries the haters of the lord should have submitted themselves unto him but their time should have endured forever he should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and with honey out of the rock what are you expecting out of the dry rock honey out of the rock shall i have satisfied thee satisfaction in your life fulfillment of the promise of god in your life deliverance from all your enemies in your life in jesus name now you can live your life without the fear of an enemy because they are all defeated i said they are all defeated jeremiah chapter 15 jeremiah chapter 15 we're reading from verse 20 jeremiah chapter 15 verse 20 and i will make thee unto this people a first brazen wall and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for i am with thee to save thee and to and to deliver thee says the lord I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and i will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible you know there's somebody in that community is so bad they don't call him by his name they call him mr terrible mr wickedness madam wickedness madam terrible and people don't they don't go near them and any scene that if they have any sin and the man comes and says, hey go out there that land is mine they run away from their land mr terrible takes the land this year i said this year your property no mr terrible will be strong enough to take it away from you as you are coming like this remember 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 that this year anywhere you are going a mighty angel is going before you the mighty power of the lord is going before you and before you get there that angel will clear mr terrible madam terror will clear them out of the way for you in jesus name 
and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible second Peter second Peter chapter 2 is second Peter chapter 2 reading from verse 9 the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations amen and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished now i'm going to show you threefold deliverance somebody say threefold deliverance what are you going to have i said what are you going to have if you say it for yourself the lord will do it threefold deliverance that the lord is going to accomplish in your life and look at second corinthians chapter one second corinthians chapter one i'm reading from verse 10. second corinthians chapter one reading from verse 10. who delivered us that's past tense past tense anything from the past that will spoil this year god will deliver you from them <laughs> verse 10 who delivered us from so great a death the death that should have happened last year and that death of last year that problem of last year saying i am looking for my victim are you a victim there I am looking for my victim and it's coming from the past all the dangers of the past still running around looking for somebody in the new year you are delivered in Jesus name <laughs> look at the next part and does deliver present tense and does deliver every day you wake up and does deliver every week you spend this new year and does deliver past total deliverance present total deliverance look at the latter part here it says in whom we trust that you were yet i can't hear our people he will yet deliver us the future guaranteed deliverance threefold deliverance has come for you and you will enjoy it in jesus name second timothy chapter four second timothy chapter four i'm reading from verse 17 and verse 18 second timothy chapter four verse 17 notwithstanding the lord stood with me he will stand with you whether the members of the church are there or not he will stand with you whether we are there or not he will stand with you and strengthen me that by me the preaching might be fully known that all the gentiles might hear look at this look at this and i and i was delivered out of the mouth of the lion even if the lion has caught you even if and he's opened his mouth and you have entered in today the lord will pull you out <laughs> he, i was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and now look at the assurance i have for the new year verse 18 and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and he will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to him my deliverer to him my redeemer to him my lord and master to him my king to whom be glory forever and ever amen you're delivered you're set free and all the plans of any enemy against your life this year totally cancelled in jesus name this message of today get it 
I said get it when the days are weary when your life is weak when the problems arise when the ocean wants to sweep you away don't cry don't panic put this message in your system you will get up you will overcome total deliverance will come to you from every enemy in jesus name point number two our privilege of sacrificial service without fear our privilege of sacrificial service without fear we're looking at luke chapter one luke chapter one verse 74 in luke chapter 1 verse 74 that he will grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies what do we do might serve him without fear serve him without fear serve him without fear now you can rise up early in the morning and take that megaphone and all through that street declare that Jesus is Savior and Jesus is Lord. No evil personality will meet you on the way. Now you can rise up in that bus and declare the gospel and make that to the passengers there, the participant at the bus crusade, and nobody will hurt you. Now, without any fear, you can tell members of your family this is the way they will listen to you, they are going to be saved through you. There is nothing to fear anymore in Jesus' name. It says that we might serve him without fear. You'll serve the Lord without fear. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 15. Romans chapter 8. Reading from verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. There's no fear in your heart now. No fear in your mind. No fear in your system. Nothing will make you afraid. You'll not be afraid of your wife now. You'll not be afraid of your husband. You'll not be afraid of your children. You'll not be afraid of your pastor. You'll not be afraid of anyone. Ah, they're afraid. Look at that verse 18 again. It says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. You see, fear brings us to bondage. Fear brings us to bondage. If you fear anything, if you fear anyone that binds you, it binds your mind. You cannot express yourself. It binds you even your appearance you'll be looking down and there's nothing you are looking down at you are trying to avoid looking at the faces of the people because you're afraid fear binds and fear brings into bondage you will not be in bondage when god created you he created you to have dominion he created you to rise up and be somebody and you will be that somebody in jesus name all the ground you have lost you will recover this year what i mean by that is let's say for the last 10 years 20 years you have been a christian and the things you should have done in that first year you couldn't do because of fear second year you couldn't do because of fear until this last year your life you are coward you are bent down you are bent low this year everything you should have done for those 20 years everything you should have done for those 10 years the spirit of fear is gone now god will bundle everything together you'll be a super success a super victor a super conqueror this year in jesus name once the bondage is 
gone the bondage of fear and you rise up the grace of God will multiply in your life year of achievement year of glory and year of power a year of the supernatural in your life it says but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry Abba Father Second Timothy chapter 1 Second Timothy chapter 1 I'm reading from verse 6 Second Timothy chapter 1 we're reading from verse 6 it says wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God stir up the gift of God stir up the gift of God which is in thee is there I said it's there by the putting on of my hands for God has not given us tell me it's a spirit and it's a terrible spirit the spirit of fear all the other spirits who are thinking of a demon there a demon there a demon there a demon there all of them put together they cannot stop you you will cast out demons you will cast out evil spirits the spirit of fear alone is able to do the damage that all the other spirits would have done that's why this year you understand anywhere you go anywhere you stand the lord has not given me say it for yourself the lord has not given you the spirit of fear no spirit will stop you it will be under your feet fear of poverty spirit of poverty under your feet spirit of premature death under your feet and the spirit of enemies are coming is uh, forefathers grandfather and all that all the spirit gone in jesus name your way is clear say my way is clear the lord will go before you he will clear the way before you behind you is watching around you is watching while you're sleeping is watching while you're awake is watching he says for god has not given us the spirit of fear if you claim any registered letter that you discovered already the postman dropped it and without remembering that you ought to sign maybe you even signed and now he's dropped it for you and you're taking it and you look at the name behind the letter say what there's a mistake here this is not mine this is not my name i'm talking about myself i said this is not my name i said this is not my name this puzzle is not mine defeat this puzzle is not mine poverty this puzzle is not mine look at it failure this puzzle is not mine dejection look at this this puzzle is not mine depression look at this this puzzle is not mine fear look at this this puzzle is not mine i will not open the letter that doesn't belong to me i'll send them back to him i said i'll send it back to them I said I'll send it back to them what God has not given you don't accept don't acknowledge don't receive don't begin to fast and pray and say this puzzle this puzzle uh-uh look at the name behind it is not yours for God has not given us the spirit of fear but what spirit do you have? Bought of power, bought of love, 
heart of a sound mind spirit of suicide go out in jesus name you will not fear i said you will not fear jeremiah chapter one jeremiah chapter one i'm reading from verse 17 jeremiah chapter one reading from verse 17 in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 17 thou therefore get up thy loins you know what that means you wear your pair of trousers and then the thing is loose you've lost weight and you can if you're trying to walk like that you'll not be able to walk proper they'll think something is wrong with you and then you put on the belt tighten that belt we're going on a journey i said tighten that belt we're going on a journey and as you put the belt there and tighten it up everything is firm now you are ready you are ready to move on into this new year as you tighten your belt and there's no fear there's nothing and the destiny and the destination is in front of you and you say i am getting there somebody are you going to get there this year therefore thou therefore get up thy loins and arise and speak unto all them that i command thee be not dismayed at their faces lest i confront thee before them it says if you act weak before them then i'll make you weak if you act fearful before them i will confound you i'll make you fearful but if you know that the king of kings had sent you and the king of kings is with you and you tighten your belt and you said i am ready the power of god will go with you for behold i have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land against the king of judah against the princes thereof against the priests thereof against the people of the land and they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee uh, you know sometimes if somebody is fighting like you know some of those people you see um, maybe in the newspapers they are boxers they are wrestlers they're fighting they are fighting even after they have won you look at them you know they've been fighting but you all the fight of this year a minute after that fight as we look at you we will not even know you've been fighting any battle you will be fresh you will be strong and then people look at you they say you know if i can be like brother so and so he doesn't have any problem praise the lord he doesn't have any problem she doesn't have any problem but you don't know it's just finished fighting a battle but he remains as fresh as ever i'm talking about somebody there as fresh as ever i'm talking about somebody there is as fresh as ever they shall fight against thee but they shall not prevail against thee for i am with thee the everlasting god says i am with thee the almighty says i am with thee the one that never lost any battle says i am with thee says the lord to deliver you i am delivered i said i am delivered number three our passion for holiness our passion for holiness before the heavenly father we're coming back to luke chapter one luke chapter one I'm reading from verses 74 and 75. 
that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him how without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life before him before the heavenly father as he sees that you are living the holy life he'll be giving more grace more strength more assurance more conviction more gift everything you need to live upright you will, you will not give you a large field to cut and not give you a sharp cutlass to do it a more to cut all the grass as he gives you the assignment he will give you the equipment if he wants you to remove a mountain he will give the equipment that is commensurable that he is fit that can do that work and remove that mountain if he gives you a field to clear he will give you the equipment to clear nothing if he wants you to wash something he'll give you the washing machine that will do it very perfectly and you will not be struggling and sweating this year you will live in righteousness and you will live in holiness before him before him before him that means in his sight and while he looks at you and he sees you don't have enough power enough strength enough ability because you're doing it before him he'll supply what you don't have are you going to live a righteous life and a holy life this year in jesus name uh, let's look at first thessalonians chapter 4 first thessalonians chapter 4 i read from verse 7 first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 for god has not called us unto uncleanness but tell me unto holiness do you remember when you started work in that school you did the interview and they called you and they said this is your class that we are going to teach but you know they provided the textbook they provided the master workbook they provided all that you need the chalkboard and the chalk and you know everything that they use nowadays in the class they didn't leave that in your hand they gave you the calling and as they gave you the calling they also give you the instrument and the equipment the lord has called us to holiness this year everything we need it will supply you will not go in your own strength you will not go in your own power you are going to be holy in jesus name now obadiah chapter one obadiah chapter one obadiah chapter one and here we're reading from verse 17 obadiah chapter one we're reading from verse 17 this year you will possess i said this year i will possess you will be holy i will be holy we shall be holy in the public we shall be holy in the office we shall be holy in the church we shall be holy obadiah are you there now have you got obadiah verse chapter 1 verse 17 but upon mount zion shall be deliverance that's why you came today you've got deliverance already and there shall be holiness look at that brother you'll see holiness in his life look at that sister you'll see holiness in her life there shall be holiness somebody say it aloud there shall be holiness and the house of jacob shall possess shall possess shall possess 
what are the possessors today what are the partakers today possess in jesus name you have passion to achieve you are going to achieve you have passion to conquer you are going to conquer every enemy will fall before you in jesus name the promise of deliverance is yours the privilege of service is yours and the passion for holiness and the power for holiness is yours in jesus name rise up and possess rise up and possess rise up and possess it's the new year it's your year it's a new era and it's your era it's the new dawn and it's your dawn and it's for you to possess there'll be deliverance there'll be holiness and the people of god shall possess their possession open your mouth and talk to the lord open your mouth and talk to the lord is it